Well, hello. My name is Sean Bordner. My name is John Stover, and welcome to the Sug.org weekly SharePoint videos. Uh, the idea here is that we're basically going to take one question each week from the Sug.org, from the discussion forums, and we're going to answer that with a little bit of demonstration, a little bit of chat. And today we're actually on the fourth floor of our parking garage in lovely Winchester, Virginia. Uh, the idea here is that we end up traveling a lot, so we're just going to try to keep these videos up from wherever we happen to be at the time. So for this, our initial voyage into the SharePoint weekly video answers. Our first question comes from Jessica, a marketing manager. This, this week's question is from Jessica. She's a marketing administrator. This week, Jessica's question is, I'm trying to have a vacation approval process in SharePoint with a calendar so that everyone's vacation will appear in one calendar. Any suggestions on how to make the workflow based upon the user so that that user who approves the vacation is based upon the employee and who they report to? Well, Jessica, thanks. That's a great question. And um, hopefully we can get that addressed for you here today. Um, basically, you're looking at two answers. You have two options here. You have one, you got SharePoint out of the box, and I'm going to walk you through all that. And the other option would be uh, customization, having some custom code ready. So, there's pros and cons to each. SharePoint out of the box, obviously, you can do this without a programmer, and you can do it right now after you watch this video. The uh, custom code requires a programmer to do it, but you don't have to have a redundant user store, basically. So let me run you through um, the out of the box solution, and then um, John will answer the custom code part of it. So let me just pull up my laptop here and walk you through this. Okay, so let's start out with the solution that would not involve any kind of custom code. And we have a SharePoint-based intranet, a corporate intranet, on the screen right now. If I scroll down, you'll see that we have a calendar called Vacation Calendar. So this is just an out-of-the-box SharePoint calendar that we created, and we called it Vacation Calendar. Nothing special there. Now, we also have a list called Staff Directory. So let's go into that list and show you the columns that you'll need to create. Make sure that you have these columns to keep the relationship between the actual user who's entering the vacation request and the person this workflow should be routed to based off of who they report to. So as you can see, we have two columns here. The, the, the first one's called reports to, and this is a person or group type. And the other one is called user. Again, it's a person or group. Those are the two key columns. All this other stuff you don't necessarily need. Um, in this case, it's a staff directory, so it comes in handy, but you don't necessarily need all that other stuff. Just these two, reports to and user. So we have these two lists. We have our calendar and we have our staff directory list. From here, I'm gonna actually go in to SharePoint Designer, which is free um, now for Microsoft. And it's a great tool for creating these conditionally driven workflows without any code being written. I'm going to open up my intranet site and I'm going to start a new workflow. To create a new workflow, I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm going to select Workflow. This is going to pull up a very handy wizard that's going to walk me through the steps of creating my workflow. Give it a name, Vacation Request. And now it's saying, what SharePoint list should this workflow be attached to? Well, I want to attach this to our vacation calendar. So I'm going to scroll down, find vacation calendar, and select it. These are the different conditions that will fire off the workflow. And I like all three of these. The first one, do I want to allow this workflow to be manually started? Sure, that's fine with me. Do I want to automatically start this workflow when a new item is created? And then the last one is automatically start this workflow whenever an item is changed. I think I'm going to choose all those because if something has changed, I still think it should be reviewed and approved. Now I'm just going to click Next. And this is the first step of my workflow. And I'm going to keep it called first or step one. That's fine. Any conditions that I wanted to also add to this, I could do that. But for now, I'm just going to leave that blank. I don't really have any other conditions other than a new item's been created or an existing item has been edited. I am going to, however, add an action. And the action I'm going to select in this case is I'm just going to assign a to-do item. You might want to shoot off an email or, 
or any of these other actions. But for this example, I'm just going to assign a to-do item. And when I select that as an action, I have two options here. This is very similar look and feel to setting up an Outlook um, rule for your inbox. It's very intuitive. You'll be able to run through this, I think, without any problem. So I have two options here. I can, what is the to-do item? And then I'm going to assign this item to which users? To these users. So I'm going to click on these users. And this is where I'm going to click Workflow Lookup. I'm going to add that. And it's going to ask me, OK, basically at this point, I need to tell it where and what. And then I also need to tell it when, or in other words, what condition. So for the where, I'm going to give it the staff directory. That is where I want you to look. And what field out of the staff directory do I want to assign this to? Well, that's going to be, I want it to the, assign it to the reports to field. Because remember, that's where we're keeping track of who that user reports to. So the user's entering a calendar event or vacation request into the calendar. And it's going to go to the staff directory to figure out who that person reports to. You will have to manually keep that staff directory up to date, doing it this way without any code. Now the second part of this is where we're saying when or under what condition. And this is where we drop down and then we say, well, we want to say when the user, staff directory user, is equal to, and we're going to click this little formula button, and we're going to say, we're going to say when the current item user is equal to the created by or modified by, and I'm going to just say created by, say OK. So that's, that's it. I'm going to say OK and it's going to complain because I'm actually using a column here that is not required. And I'm going to say yes, that's fine. Say OK. And that's all there is to it. We just set up an out of the box way of driving this vacation request workflow without writing any code. And we pinned that workflow to that specific calendar over here in our corporate intranet site. And so when a new item is created in this calendar, it's going to run through that workflow. That workflow is going to say, check the staff directory to find out who to assign this to. It's going to go into this list, find out who to assign it to, and assign an item to that particular user. That's how you would do it out of the box without any custom code. I hope this was helpful. Thanks, Sean. That was a great demonstration of using SharePoint Designer to solve the problem using some of the configurable workflows. Um, one of the other options to do, as Sean mentioned earlier, is obviously using um, custom development. For those of you that are actually wanting to start, uh, for those of you who are actually wanting to configure workflows using Visual Studio, the great place to start is actually the Office 2007 Server SDK. Um, the Moss SDK is actually available as a download from Microsoft. We'll put up a link here as well so you can actually follow it. But in that SDK, there are some workflow examples, and one of those examples in particular is actually called um, findmanager.cs. It's a C-sharp file that actually has the code necessary to call back to Active Directory, and using that, find the person's manager using the Active Directory schema. That way you don't have to replicate any of the information or duplicate any of that information, store it in SharePoint. You can actually leverage that using your Active Directory login, use that code to find that employee's Active Directory manager, and then use that to fire off the workflow and send that workflow across. Now you can leverage that code solution either just using an out a, a configured workflow activity so that it's just using workflow and using the forms interface. However, something else that a lot of the clients that we work with end up wanting to use is InfoPath um, and using an InfoPath form to actually submit the approval and actually placing that code within the InfoPath form and deploying it on SharePoint so that you have full capability and you have that nice, pretty GUI um, that is a little more uh, professional in many cases than just the, the, uh, the web interface. Sure, gives you a much more rich form and the experience for the end user still through a browser. Yep.